It took more than 150 years for the U.S. to finally recognize its second Independence Day, Juneteenth, the day that many enslaved black Americans learned that they were free. Now, at long last, is a federal holiday that honors that monumental chapter in African-American history, and actually American history as well, I should say. And one artist wants to keep advancing their rich, rich heritage through his art. I want you to take a look at some of his work. Uh, this painting is called Free at Last. It depicts an enslaved African with his head held high and tears streaming from his eyes. You can actually see his right hand carrying a broken shackle as it's placed over his heart, symbolizing his freedom and allegiance to his new home. Time now for the exchange and a conversation with the artist himself, Ted Ellis is the man behind uh, this powerful painting. He joins us live now from New Orleans. Ted, thank you so much for being with us. I have to say that I was looking through your work this morning and I found it just so powerful. I was extremely moved. I wanna show um, our audience one particular painting that moved me, I think the most, um, Journey One. Can we pull it up on our screen? It really yeah. depicts you know, it depicts the sort of journey that African Americans have been on this country, obviously starting from slavery to picking cotton to the boardroom. And then eventually you can't really see, I don't know if we can see, but you have the capital on the other side of, of the screen. And, you know, the last man is essentially representative of President Obama. Um, and it really struck me because I look at this painting, I think, gosh, we really have been on quite a ride here in the United States. However, there is still so much more to achieve. There's so much more to accomplish. And while we have made progress, um, the progress is not finished. There's a lot more to do here. Give me your thoughts on that. Well, you know, definitely. You know, I've been in this space for 20 years uh, of pictorially documenting the, um, the Juneteenth story. And, uh, you know, working as a museum director for Southern University at New Orleans, Sonoma, you know, we're engaged with putting up exhibitions to gain the public trust. Uh, there's something about sharing and caring. And I think if we are culturally sensitive to everyone, it makes things much more palatable and easy and equitable in this space that we, we live and we work in. And, and we need to be setting the best example for the next generation of, of leaders and providers and, and caretakers. And I try to express myself that kind of way with my passion, being purposed in my passion through my art. And so, um, you know, this Juneteenth for the second observance of Juneteenth, you know, I've been engaged with multiple projects and programs with the uh, Federal 400 Commission. Uh, we put on Freedom Forward. That's going to be viewed to millions of folks um, this um, Friday coming up. Um, being right there at the mm -hmm. at ground zero with Juneteenth, my 30 Juneteenth champions that specifically speaks to 30 individuals since 1865 mm -hmm. till present to the formation of the 11th federal holiday. Last year, I was at the Wilmington Public Library um, mm -hmm. showcasing my Juneteenth exhibition. So you've been busy. Corporation has my, my journey to equity excellence. So. Literacy, visual literacy is so important and it's so easy to engage and talk about mm -hmm. our identity and where we are in this healing process of this well, country toward actually, freedom. As you're speaking, I want to pull up um, I want to pull up journey one again, because um, what struck me about it also was the detail. The sky literally begins to change color. It's not just about um, right. the four depictions of different men walking. But the sky starts from a very sort of dark, hopeless sky. And then you're seeing towards the end with a depiction of Barack Obama, um, sunshine or at least a sort of light blue sky. And then you use rather than just a sort of normal road, you use yes, rail tracks, yes. right, which also has yes. Um, yes. which is also symbolic in America when you talk about slavery and, you know, Harriet Tubman, for example, the under, Underground Railroad, all sorts of things. Right. So um, what do you want people to take away when people sort of look at your art and they study it so go ahead so we all have we all have stories um my my, my history and my culture as an african-american is is one of struggle one of perseverance one of resiliency one of strength you know fighting toward um to showing our identity and purpose and value and work 
in a constructive manner. You know, so 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 when you look at the journey from the slave ship to the cotton field to the boardroom to the president of the United States, you know, to the U.S. Capitol, that shows a progression in the journey from the dark to the light. Um, mm -hmm. It's moving freedom forward. It's where we need to be as all human beings and citizens of the world. It's the care for each other. If we're not trying to improve our human capital and worth as individuals, we're failing. And so when we look at the, the responsibility of corporations, when we look at the responsibilities of institutions, when we look mm -hmm. at the responsibilities of our individual self, it's, it's one of improvement. Mm -hmm. Improve mm -hmm. our human capital and I worth. We need and to Ted, be there's actually another, in there's another painting I want to show our audience quickly before we run out of okay. time. Um, that is built on our backs because it is true that African Americans were literally a currency in this country. If we could pull up built on our backs, but yet a lot of Americans have no idea what Juneteenth actually is. Still to this day, 150 years after the end of slavery, a lot of Americans in this country have no idea what this holiday actually celebrates. Um, why is that, do you think? Uh, it's, it's, it's information. We have to get the information out in front. We have to get the stories and the true narratives out in front. So when we think about you know, Freedom Forward, let's think about 1619, 20 or so enslaved Africans arrived at Port, Point Comfort, Virginia. From the arc of 1619, 47 million African-Americans here in the United States, not counting abroad. But when you think about where freedom started, Fort Monroe, that was mm -hmm. under the contraband camps. Two and a half years later, outside the Emancipation Proclamation, General Gordon Granger and U.S. colored troops were down in Galveston, Texas, marching toward Reedy Chapel saying, cease and desist, slavery mm -hmm. is ended. And right. so when we look at, when we look at um, um, built on our backs, mm -hmm. you're looking at the five major commodities that drove global commerce that sugar, cotton, tobacco, rice, and that human individual in the middle who was recognized right. as chattel. And, it, and, and you did point high. out, you pointed sort of the, the international component of that out as well. It's not just obviously in America, uh, it's not, not just America that benefited from slavery, other countries did as well, particularly uh, in Europe. All right, Ted Ellis, we do have to leave it there. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you.